I think we are very well accepted here in Ireland. Our medical visitors have a close relationship with our doctors and pharmacists and I think this is a great benefit for the company. Hello and welcome back to the Southern Stars West Cork is the Business podcast. My name is Sean Mahan and over the course of this series I'm chatting to some of West Cork's most interesting and accomplished business people about how they made their way in their respective industries and what has driven them to success. If you missed last week's great chat with Jacqueline O'Donovan, OBE, the MD of O'Donovan Waste Disposal, be sure to check it out after this. Now I'm delighted to be joined by today's guest, Brigitte Wagner-Halsik, the managing director and owner of Roa Pharmaceuticals in Bantry, which in my opinion is one of West Cork's most interesting business success stories, dating all the way back to its inception in 1959 with the company now in business for over 60 years. Roa Pharmaceuticals employs over 80 people, the majority of whom are from the local area, and the company now exports to over 85 countries and ranks as one of Ireland's top businesses. Roa Limited and Roex Limited continue to grow. Citrine Allergy is one of Ireland's number one hay fever products, and BrewPro is one of the country's leading ibuprofen brands. Last year, in 2022, Roa launched new products, including BrewPro for children and Sedina, which is Ireland's first generic version of Viagra. Hi, Brigitte. It's great to see you again and welcome to today's podcast. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much and welcome, Sean, here to our company, Roa Inventory. Thank you for having me. It's, it's lovely to be here. Brigitte, I thought we'd just kick off, and for the benefit of our listeners, could you briefly describe what Roa Pharmaceuticals is and what the company produces and sells today? Well, Roa is a family-owned company, and we are specializing in the manufacture of OTC and prescription medicines for the treatment of cold sores to gold stones and kidney stones. These products are marketed in Ireland, and we are also exporting to over 85 five countries worldwide. We are also marketing, as you already pointed out, a significant number of generic products under the name Rovex. I think we are very well accepted here in Ireland. Our medical visitors have a close relationship with our doctors and pharmacists, and I think this is a great benefit for the company. I, th- I, th- I think I would agree, and I think your, your, your brands are very well known, not just around the West Cork area, but across Ireland as a, as a whole. Um, and so having a successful pharma company based down here in the southwest of Ireland, um, just outside Bantry, is, is probably a little unusual. So I was wondering, maybe we might just go right back to the beginning, and, and, and maybe you could tell us and help us understand why, back in 1959, your then-husband, Roland Wagner, um, who, for our listeners' benefit, I believe it's his initials that make up the name Roa. Um, why did he decide to take a look at Ireland um, and, and actually West Cork and, and specifically Bantry as a possible location to set up an Irish branch of, of Roa Wagner, Germany? Indeed, it is very interesting. In 1959, the IDA invited companies from the continent to invest in Ireland and to set up companies. My late husband Roland and Wagner and Mr. Lieper were one of the first Germans who were invited and traveled around Ireland to look for locations. Mr. Lieper settled in Kilani, as you know, and Roland Wagner fell in love with a beautiful Bantry Bay. And that's, and that's how everything, how everything that's began. That's how everything began. started and began. And I understand that Roland even built his own airstrip in Bantry so that he could fly back and forth between Germany and Ireland in a, in a twin-engine Cessna. And, and, and indeed, you also hold your pilot's license. Did, did, you, did you fly back and forth between the two countries as well? Well, let me just explain. Roland, of course, built his own airstrip in Bantry and flew back and forth between Germany and Ireland in his own twin-engine plane. We are still holding the license for the airstrip and especially during the summer, people are flying down from Dublin to their summer homes in West Cork. 
I was a private pilot for over 30 years, but I don't fly anymore. I flew single engine planes and it was quite difficult to come to Bantry because of challenging weather. But again, I think we have a beautiful airstrip here and people are really using it, which is, I think, a great benefit. Even the president came, I, I think two presidents came to our airstrip because they couldn't land with a helicopter. Fantastic. And, 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 and I, I, I mean, I live uh, not far from, from Union Hall in Skibbereen and, and, and we see the, the, the light aircraft flying over our house regularly on the way into, into the Bantry airstrip. So it's definitely an asset for, yes. for the area. It is an asset, yes. Now, you took over the running of the company, I think, in 1979 um, due, due to the sad and untimely death of, of Roland. Um, now, at the, at the time, the Irish economy was, was struggling a little bit. Uh, Bantry was still reeling from the shock of the Widdy Island disaster. And, and I, my understanding is the company only had a, a small number of staff compared to, to today. So obviously you, you, you had a lot, of, a lot of challenges to consider in that situation. What made you stay and take on this enormous challenge of, of running Roa Pharmaceuticals over here in Ireland, rather than perhaps saying, do you know what, this is far too difficult, I, I'm going to go home to Germany? Yeah, it's true, but look, you met me before. I'm a very determined uh, person and I wanted to succeed. So let me explain. The sudden and untimely death of Roland was, of course, a great shock for me. I was, it was his wish that I should continue and I took on this enormous challenge. It was indeed a very difficult start as Bantry was still under great shock over the Betelgeuse disaster at Widdy Island. I think this was the worst maritime disaster in the history of the state and is still to this day as a tragedy claimed the lives of 50 people. It was also a very difficult time. The Irish economy was struggling and we were facing a severe recession at that time. The unions were also very strong. But despite these enormous challenges, I was very determined to succeed. So did you actually have any, did you have any business experience or pharmaceutical experience uh, before you took on the role of running ROA? Well, not really, but I have a degree in industrial business management. And here in Ireland, I worked very closely for many years with Roland and I gained incredible experiences from him. He was really my teacher. I learned a lot about the regulations in a pharmaceutical company and the complicated operations revolving around the manufacture, shipping and release of products as well as the day-to-day -day running of a company. And, and I think you'd probably agree, I think all of us in business, uh, that we, we, we never stop learning. It's, it's about learning all the way through our careers. I'm still learning yeah. <laughs> because uh, regulations have changed. You know, it's quite, uh, I think to work in a pharmaceutical company you have to be alert mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. day and night almost. Because you're dealing with, with people's, yeah. people's lives and exactly, people's health. Exactly. Um, I absolutely. think it's a very mm -hmm. responsible mm -hmm. position I'm in. Yes. yes. And I, yeah. I take it as a very serious job. Yes, I can see that. Yes. And thinking again, thinking back to that time, sort of over 40 years ago, um, would you say it was harder then for... For, for women, for a woman to, to run a business and, and, to, and to make, say, business deals. I, I know you did a lot of work, you know, building the company up in Ireland, but then you went off to, to, to build up new markets and, 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 and new um, uh, deals with, with, with other countries in, in Europe, the Middle East, etc. Was it, was it more difficult then than it is today? Have things improved in, in that context? Or, or do you still think there's, there's work for us to do as a society? Of course, 40 years ago, it was harder for women, but I personally did not experience it. The fact that I was the owner of a company, I was always very well accepted and respected, especially in Middle East countries. One of our biggest markets is Egypt, and I can tell you, it's not easy to deal with these people, but they all respect and accept me. In general, things improved for women in business, but they are still not fully accepted, not paid equally, and we definitely need more women in high positions in multinational companies. 
in the pharmaceutical world, you still don't see many women in top management. And do you think do you think do you think that that's changing? Do you think there's do you think it, you will see change over the next decade? It, it is changing, but in my opinion, it's it's a very slow change. Okay, so that's that's something that needs to be focused on, particularly I, in this industry. I think so. Okay, I think so. And and now you obviously you've been, you've been very successful in your career, um, but I suspect as in most business ventures, there must have been tough and challenging times. Um, what what do you think are the kind of personal traits that you have as a as a business person that have helped you along the way, um, especially when it came to turning a business like Rower into the success that it's been over the last sixty years? What what makes what drives you to succeed? What gives you the energy or, or the focus to make things happen? Well, certainly there have been difficult times, but I always had a positive attitude. A lot has to do with your own personality. Very important is a safe and determined appearance. You should appear as a woman and not try to imitate men. I think that is very important. Be your own person, be your own character, yeah. your own personality. Yeah. And I believe that's what my people tell me. I have a strong personality. Sometimes people don't like it because it's too strong. But look, that's my... So, and then, of course, uh, you asked about Brexit mm. and um, the pandemic. My strong ambition drove me to success. I always had a great vision, and I'm also very grateful for my energy. Mm -hmm. I, of course, I have faced a lot of challenges in my career. Due to Brexit, for instance, I built up a large stock of goods at high risk, but when we suddenly had the unforeseen pandemic, we, Rover, were very lucky because we had products on the market which some other companies didn't have. Was it luck or vision? Who knows? Maybe intuition. Maybe it was something that you, you, you just felt was a, a prudent well, uh, thing to do for the, for the business. You know, it's difficult to say, but I, I think you need also a lot of luck yeah, yeah. to succeed. And naturally, you asked me, is it, was it difficult? Of course, I have many sleepless nights in difficult situations, but my optimism helps me in the end. Yes. And you mentioned energy there. Is there anything that you do to keep that energy levels up? Anything? I mean, is it, is it around keeping yourself healthy and, and, and fit? Well, or of course, I eat healthy food. Mm -hmm. I keep myself very fit. I like swimming. Mm -hmm. I like walking. I'm running around to the company here, yeah. which keeps me fit. Fit and active. So, yeah. so it's about having that balanced, yeah. that balanced approach. Hello, I hope you're enjoying this episode of our West Cork is the Business podcast. There's plenty more to come, but I just wanted to let you know that entries for the West Cork Business and Tourism Awards 2023 are now open. Entering the awards is free and easy and provides your business with a great opportunity to get recognised for all the brilliant work you do in West Cork. We have eight categories which cater to all types of businesses, big and small, across all sectors. So enter now for the chance to be crowned overall West Cork Business of the Year for 2023. The West Cork Business and Tourism Awards are brought to you by the Southern Star in partnership with Carberry. Visit www.westcorkbusinessandtourismawards.ie today. So when we last met at the wonderful Maritime Hotel in Bantry, you had just been awarded the Southern Star and Cork County Council's West Cork Business Ambassador of the Year Award for 2022. Very well deserved and my congratulations again for, for, for receiving that honour. I remember during your acceptance speech at the time, you said that the achievement is all down to my team here. So could you tell me a little bit more about what you, what you meant by that and, and how you've built this successful team here at ROA and kind of what, what's your approach to, to managing people? Well, it's absolutely true. All the awards I have received over the years and especially the County Mayor's 2022 award that I received is all down to my very loyal management team and staff in ROA. I am a great believer in teamwork. You must delegate to the work. You cannot do everything on your own and you must trust your team, which then gives them the confidence and responsibility in what they are doing. 
On a personal level, I was overwhelmed to receive this award at a beautiful ceremony in Bentry, and I was able to have members of my team present. This was very special, and I would like to thank you personally for this wonderful event. Thank you, not at all. It was, it was our pleasure. It was, it was a wonderful afternoon. It was a wonderful afternoon. And would you have any particular piece of advice for, say, for somebody who was in management or maybe just starting off their career in, in, in management about how to work with people or how to get the best out of people? My advice is be honest and straight. Be yourself, listen, delegate, trust and respect people. I think, that's I think this is a very important advice. And, and, and I think fair enough and, and, and very easy for people to, to understand as well. well so. But will all the young people understand it? <laughs> the successful, the ones that will be successful probably will. Who knows with the others? Exactly. Um, so um, obviously I mentioned at the beginning of the interview that Roa's location is in this beautiful part of the world down here in, in, in Bantry in, in West Cork, Southwest Ireland. Has that ever been a, a barrier to attracting the kind of talent that you need to attract for a business like Roa? Um, or, 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 or conversely, can it, can it work to your advantage these days? I think it worked in our advantage because I don't think Roa's location is a barrier, especially now. Many young families want to raise their children in a safe and healthy environment. Living in the city is not for everybody. Also in a small company, you can gain a lot of experiences. Our laboratory is the best example. Young analysts, and some have even studied in Trinity College, are working on different projects. But of course, when they have gained a certain level of experiences, they are approached by recruitment companies for multinationals. And then of course, we are losing out and we cannot compete with their offers. However, I have a very loyal staff. Some members of my team have been with the company over 25 to 30 years, which I think speaks for itself. And I, I can really imagine that somebody who makes a career here can have a, a wonderful lifestyle living in, in West Cork, near Bantry, have, building their career here with Roa and all the benefits that come with, yes. as you say, raising a family in this, yes, in this, I, in this I think lovely so. part of the world. And I think Roa is really a family. Mm -hmm. We are a family. And I often hear people love to work in Volvo. And I think that goes a long way in today's uh, recruitment exactly. uh, climate. Um, well, I mean, sometimes I don't like these recruitment companies because you have just <laughs> built up a wonderful team. Mm. But look, mm. such is life. Yeah. Yeah. And I always will support young people if they want to climb you know, higher in their positions and mm. so on. I mm. think. I have to give them the chance. I um, can't be so selfish. No, absolutely. And, and I think, as you say, it's, it's a benefit for a business if they can keep people for a long period of time yes. and bring them along and train them. Because uh, it, 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 as we all know in business, it's, yeah. it can take up a lot of resource for a business where they're constantly trying to uh, recruit. I know in my own business, it's, 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 it takes up a lot of time and energy trying to find people, and particularly at the moment. It's, uh, the recruitment market is challenging um, to, yeah. to, find, to find the people find enough of the right kind of people quickly enough. And I think uh, there is a shortage of e e persons with expertise, uh -huh. mm -hmm. especially in our... Uh, yes, which is a fairly specialised, well, a very industry, specialised industry. In our industry, Absolutely. it's quite Absolutely. specialised. A, a quite a but small... so far, I think we have wonderful people here and now it's wonderful to live in Bentry. Fantastic. Um, now, just outside of, of business, I know that supporting local good causes and, and local community events is something that's very important to you. Uh, things like the Bantry Agricultural Show, I know the, the National Rowing Championships uh, were down here in Bantry uh, re fairly recently. But I know there's, there's, there's one cause in particular that is quite special to you and the staff of ROA, and that's the Bantry Hospice Project. Um, in fact, I believe you were a founding member of this important initiative, which raises funds for palliative care units. Um, could you just tell me a little bit more about this initiative and, and why it is so important to you and, and the, the, the people that work for ROA? Well, when we were planning for the 50th anniversary of ROA back in 2008, I was looking for a partnership with a charity which would always be associated with ROA. 
I have always been a strong believer in charity and to give something back to the community. The, the idea for Bentley Hospice Project, together with wonderful local people, was born immediately. To have a palliative care unit in the regional hospital of Bentley is very important, as Mary Mount in Cork is far away and many people could not afford to travel up and down to Cork. It's a long journey for families to make in their darkest hours. I knew we had to do something to help. The Bentley Hospice Project is very close to my heart and even now I wish I could do more. I'm delighted to tell you that since its inception, the Bentley Hospice Project has raised over 1.5 million wow. euros. For uh, such a small community or area, I think it's a great achievement. Oh, that's fantastic. Congratulations. But it's also important to note that 100% of money raised is used to support palliative care and the required services. There are zero administration costs, as my, my company, Rover, provides all the administration support. And the board of the Bentry Hospice Project is made up of volunteers. But we are also supporting, I think this is important to mention, Rover currently sponsors the Matt Kingston Scholarship Fund, and uh, which awards a Leaving Cert student with a scholarship of 3,000 per year. And I think this is wonderful because uh, some of the students come back to Rova and they work with us for a little while. And I wished, I wished that more entrepreneurs here in the area would get involved to support courses like this. And, and, and particularly nice if you if you find that those students, as you say, come and work here for a little yes. while and then, then maybe maybe go off for their careers. And exactly. then I, I, I presume maybe some of them end up coming back down to Bantry and, and possibly work yes. with you in the future. Yeah. Uh, so, but I'm not doing it for this. I just want to support students, especially from families which cannot afford to pay mm -hmm. their university yes. fees, etc. And... Um, so we've talked, we've talked about the business and we've talked about its, its importance uh, in the local community uh, in this area of, of West Cork and Bantry. What, what do you hope the future holds for Roa Pharmaceuticals? I mean, what, what, are, the, what are the company's aspirations and, and plans for the future? Well, I can assure you that the future for Roa is very bright indeed. We are constantly looking for new and unique products. We want to offer the highest quality medicine and the, at the most effective price to the patient. And we are continually in negotiating and working with many manufacturers around the world, so to speak. I mean, I go as far as countries, Asia, to look for new developments. So I think the future looks bright. It looks bright. And, and how, much, how much time do you tend to spend uh, sort of in, your home is Cologne in, in, in Germany? And obviously your home is here in Bantry, and then presumably you're you're off on business trips as well. So how what's the kind of the the break the ratio? Where, where do you well, spend Well, as you time? know, I, I have another company, pharmaceutical company in Germany. Mm. So I try to split my time um, two two weeks here, two weeks there. It doesn't work out all the time. Three yeah. weeks, two weeks. But yes, I uh, wish to come every month because, as I told you before, it is very important in a pharmaceutical. A company that you as the owner or managing director know everything. Mm -hmm. If there are crisis, I have to know it. Mm -hmm. And I want to be very close to my people. Mm -hmm. And I think they appreciate it. And would that be, would that be another piece of advice that you would give Definitely. to another managing director or chief executive? Definitely. I mean, you should not just come and say hello and play golf. You should <laughs> get really involved in the business. And I mean, if you ask my managers, I am very involved. And, and, and quite hands on and, and, and knowing, knowing the detail. I know all the details, uh -huh. even though I'm not an expert in pharmacy, mm -hmm. but I know all the details. Yes. You know, yes. if they explain something to me, I know exactly what they're telling me. Yes. And if it is wrong, I tell them. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and listen, thinking, I mean, thinking about West Cork, you obviously, you obviously love West Cork, you obviously love, love this area uh, around Bantry. Um, 
from a business perspective, is there anything else that you think West Cork as a region should be doing to maybe encourage more business innovation or more investment or entrepreneurs to come and relocate or to base their businesses here? Is there, is there anything over the years that, that you've, you've, you've sort of spotted that, that would help this part of Ireland? Well, definitely we have to improve the current infrastructure. We, we have to have full access to high-speed broadband, not only for business and education, but also for domestic households locally. I think this is a problem in this area. Mm -hmm. And unless you have this, uh, not, unless you don't have this, you will not attract people. Mm -hmm. It is wonderful to have flights, for instance, to sunny destinations out of Cork Airport, but what is badly needed to improve flight connections as well as new routes for business people. I mean, it's wonderful to come here, but it takes me up to nine hours. Mm -hmm. Nine hours to come from Germany to Ireland for a flight which takes maybe one hour, 50 mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. So if Cork Airport will not improve mm -hmm. the flight connections, I think you will not really attract many companies to come to this part of the world. So really it's... I'm it's, sorry for that, no, it's to say it, but you asked me. It's connectivity both in of terms course. of broadband infrastructure and, and, of and connectivity in terms of, of, of transport links. We live in this world, technology is so important mm -hmm. and will get more important, yeah. I, I believe. Yes. Okay, and um, how important was... Uh, we mentioned earlier uh, that obviously uh, last year you won the, uh, the Business Ambassador of the Year Award, but going back to 20, 2018, um, Roa, as a company, uh, won the Southern Stars inaugural West Cork Business of the Year award. Was that was that nice to win an award? I mean, you, you, as a company, you've won lots of awards over the years. <laughs> but was it nice to win an award on your on your home patch? Of course, I was. It was a wonderful honor. I'm very proud as it's recognized the hard work of my team. And the same night that Rover won this award. Bentry Hospice Project received the award for the best non-profit organization. So that was a great day for us. And again, I was very proud and especially for my team here in Rover and the committee members of the Bentry Hospice Project. That was a, that was a, that was a, lovely, it was a lovely day uh, back at the Inchidoni uh, Island Lodge and, and Lodge and Spa Hotel uh, back in 2018. Uh, it, was, it was great fun. Um, and Brigitte, I just wanted to ask you now, just on a, on a, on a, I suppose, a personal level, what, what do you love most about living and working in West Cork? Well, I live a very hectic life in Germany. This is also due to my position as Honorary Consul General of Ireland. When I come to Bentry, I love the quietness, the nature and the beautiful scenery. And I enjoy the time with my two Labradors. <laughs> They're my babies. What are their names? Buddy and Choco. Buddy and Choco. Choco is brown, so chocolate brown. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that, that's, what, that's what keeps you on, on a balance, is it? Out walking Absolutely. with the dogs, enjoying Absolutely. the fresh air. Because, I mean, I really work very hard, very hard. Yeah. when well, I'm here. And you mentioned that you're, on, you're, you're the, also you're the, you're the Honorary Council uh, of Ireland. Uh, in Germany, which which I, I imagine takes up quite a bit of time, and I, I think one of the one of the uh, aspects of that is is that you organise the St Patrick's Day event uh, every year. Every year, uh, about uh, I have a reception for over four hundred people. The Irish ambassadors coming, ministers are coming, the Lord Mayor of Cologne, and the Catholic, uh, sorry, the church people, mm -hmm. and from the banks and so. Mm -hmm. No, it's one of the most important receptions in. Cologne City yes. and it's a hotel it's a wonderful hotel it's all uh, lit in green so we really celebrate the Irish National Day it sounds amazing it sounds fantastic it sounds like a lot of work as well this year I had a very interesting minister uh, in Cologne so no it's wonderful and presumably that's part of the of the role of being the honorary council in terms of uh, cultivating links between Ireland and Germany, uh, increasing and, and strengthening co commercial links, etc., and, and networking links? Well, we have quite a large com Irish community in the Cologne area, 
And don't forget, I'm the honorary consul for three states. Mm -hmm. And North Rhine, Westphalia is one of the biggest. So I'm really very busy. I'm sure there's some time, hopefully, when you're not working. Um, so when you're not working, what, what, are, what are your interests? What are your passions? What do you do for downtime? Well, my uh, passion is I'm very interested in art. And for many years, I'm a, an art collector. I love reading art books and visiting galleries and museums around the globe. This gives me the greatest satisfaction. It's wonderful to think about something which is beautiful, interesting, as you can see here in my office, all the beautiful work I have. No, this is my passion, art. And, and just for our listeners' benefit, uh, just, just even walking into the offices and the factory here at Roa today, I've, I've, I've been presented, I've seen some beautiful artworks on the wall just, just coming through reception and up the stairs and, and now sat in, in, in Brigitte's office. So I, I can see that means a lot to you. Well, you know, I think it's very important. If you work hard you, in your office, you still have to have pleasure. So when I think about difficult things, I look at my paintings and I say, OK, I get it. I make it. And you spend a lot of time in the office, so yeah, it helps. It, it, it helps. It, it, it helps. Um, I think I think we're nearly at the end of our conversation today, uh, Brigitte. But but like I tried to wrap up um, all of the conversations with with business people uh, from West Cork. Um, is there one piece of advice that you would give somebody who was say right at the beginning of their career in any industry? You're, you're, you're very successful and accomplished business people. You've seen a lot of success. You've overcome a lot of challenges over the years. You've seen things change during the decades. Is there, is, there, is there one piece of advice you would give someone who's looking ahead at their career? Well, one piece is probably not enough. You must have visions. You must focus on something you want to achieve. You have to work hard and you must be very determined. But I think the most important thing is that you must believe in yourself. Self-belief is everything. Self-belief is everything. Well, I think that's a wonderful way to wrap up our conversation today. Uh, Brigitte Wagner-Halsic, I'd like to thank you sincerely for inviting me over to Roa Pharmaceuticals today. I've really, really enjoyed our conversation. And thank you for sharing uh, some of your insights and stories uh, from over the, uh, over the years with your career. Um, I'd like to wish Roa Pharmaceuticals every success for the future and to say thank you very much for your time. Sean, thank you very much for this wonderful morning session and thank you for inviting me. And I would just like to wish you and your team in Southern Star great success in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the West Cork is the Business podcast. If you've enjoyed this, please rate, review and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget, the West Cork Business and Tourism Awards are now open for 2023. The awards are brought to you by The Southern Star in partnership with Carberry. So visit westcorkbusinessandtourismawards.ie to enter your business today. Head to southernstar.ie forward slash podcasts for more episodes of the West Cork is the Business podcast. And thanks for listening.